have our pediatric IBD center, and so it's a comprehensive multidisciplinary program, consists of multiple um, providers. So we have two physicians, we have one nurse practitioner, we have a social worker, a dietitian, and an IBD pharmacist. Patients also have access to a psychologist and pediatric and colorectal surgeons as part of the program. Um, and what you know we know about IBD and, and chronic diseases is that it's a lifelong disease. And so treatment for these patients does not just include treating their symptoms, but also addressing other aspects of their lives. So that includes their well-being, um, also addressing things like medication costs, um, you know, anxiety around procedures, um, you know, and also having to take time off, you know, if their symptoms flare or having to go in for um, their medications. Our program is unique in Northeast Ohio because it has two facets. So we provide a health maintenance um, clinic as well as a transition clinic and so this um, you know helps our patients throughout as they get older so in the beginning our patients are learning about their diagnoses and so this the health maintenance visit serves as an education visit and so they learn about their diagnoses they see all of our other providers learn about having healthy nutrition how to navigate staying home from school if they have flares or you know needing their medications um, and then as they get older we start to help them develop skills to take ownership of their disease and to become independent. So that then leads them to our transition clinic where we help them um, go off into the adult world and see an adult GI doctor. So having a new diagnosis to any patient or family is, is definitely scary. You know, a lot of patients, you know, and families, they say, you know, was there something I could have done to prevent this from happening? The answer is no, you know, and, you know, but what I tell the families is that with our IBD program, we provide them with the support to you know help guide them along this journey we're partners in their care any questions that they have we have someone who is specialized to be able to answer those questions for them the levels of treatment depends on how severe the patient's disease is and so most patients um, do well with medications but we know that up to 30 to 50 percent of patients either lose response to medications or don't respond to medications at all um, and need you know go through multiple different biologics some patients do end up needing surgery, but you know we really talk to them that surgery does not mean it's a failure of medications. Surgery is a part of their treatment. Some families um, do seek second opinions. Sometimes kids might not be responding to the first, second, or third medication that they're on, and so they come in and seek second opinions. The good news for our patients is that we are actively involved in research, and so we are in a handful of clinical trials. And so what these are are new medications um, that are available to our um, patients and most of them are patients who have failed um, you know multiple biologics and so um, their symptoms aren't under control you know they're having you know belly pain you know diarrhea lots of blood in their stool and um, and have limited options and so when they uh, come to us you know we have different medications that are available to them that might not be available at other nearby hospitals or other nearby um, um, clinics. IBD is not curable, but we have amazing medications that help patients um, go into remission and keep them living healthy, normal lives. So I tell families, you know, it it is scary, you know, because they have this new diagnosis that can't be cured, but these amazing medications allow them to live a normal, healthy life. They can continue to go to school, to play sports, go to college, have a job. There's just many options available to them.